is said that the shape of China resembles a rooster. It is also said that without Taiwan, the rooster is disabled. Welcome to the People's Republic of China. Our journey begins in the capital city of Beijing, home to the Forbidden City and access to the Great Wall of China. Then we fly to Xi'an, the first capital of China, where more than 8,000 life-size terracotta warriors were buried with the first emperor in the third century BC. Chengdu is the capital of Sichuan province and home to two panda breeding centers and a moon bear rehabilitation center. Our next stop is Zhou Zaigo, which sits at an elevation of more than 9,000 feet and offers some of the most breathtaking scenery in the world. Next, we take the train to Chongqing, where we board our boat for a three-day cruise on the Yangtze River, taking us through many gorges and down the lock system of the Three Gorges Project near Yuchang. The entire trip lasted 16 days. The Beijing subway system opened its first line in 1969 and is now the fourth longest in the world. It's easy to navigate using the latest subway map downloaded to my iPhone. Morning in Temple of the Sun Park is exercise time for the local residents. Dance, shuttlecock, tai chi, musical performances, and even calligraphy practice can be seen in the city's many parks. Of course, I had to participate. <laughs> Beijing is a thoroughly modern city with a population of almost 22 million people and way too many cars. Driving is restricted by license plate number to alternate days. A nighttime food market offers both traditional and exotic fare. <laughs> Located in the center of Beijing, the Forbidden City served as the home of emperors and their households as well as the ceremonial and political center of Chinese government for almost 500 years, beginning with the Ming Dynasty in 1421. Puyi, the last emperor of China, 
abdicated in 1912. Today, it houses the Palace Museum. The palace complex exemplifies traditional Chinese palatial architecture and has influenced cultural and architectural developments in East Asia and elsewhere. The Forbidden City was declared a World Heritage Site in 1987 and is listed by UNESCO as the largest collection of preserved ancient wooden structures in the world. Tiananmen Square has been the site of a number of political events and student protests, starting with the May 4th movement in 1919 and including the proclamation of the People's Republic of China by Mao Zedong in 1949. Perhaps the most infamous was the 1989 massacre, where the image of tank man stopping a column of tanks was broadcast throughout the world. No one knows if the man in the image is still alive. The Great Wall of China, which was built, destroyed, rebuilt, and maintained from the 5th century BC through the 16th century, stretches for 5,500 miles, roughly separating China from Inner Mongolia. The wall played a decisive role in keeping out the Manchu invaders during the Ming Dynasty. But in 1644, the invaders finally gained entrance through the Eastern Gate when it was opened by a disaffected Ming general. Thus began the Qing Dynasty, which ruled until the last emperor abdicated in 1912. Xi'an is one of the oldest cities in China, dating back more than 3,100 years, and it was the eastern terminus of the ancient Silk Road. Its name means Western Peace. But its real attraction is the army of more than 8,000 life-sized terracotta warriors, first discovered in a field in 1974. To date, only about 1,500 have been excavated. The rest will stay buried until technology evolves to preserve the coloring found on the statues. The terracotta army is a form of funerary art buried with the first emperor of China in 210 BC. The army's purpose was to help rule another empire in the afterlife. The terracotta army figures were manufactured in workshops by government laborers and by local craftsmen. The head, arms, legs, and torsos were created separately and then assembled. Studies show that eight face molds were most likely used and then clay was added to provide individual facial features. No two warriors have the exact same face. A nighttime stroll through Xi'an takes us to the Muslim Quarter with its narrow streets lined with shops and its Middle Eastern style bazaar. Adorable is the only word to describe the giant panda bear. We are in the Bifen Sha Breeding Center in Yayan, just south of the city of Shendu, watching these six to nine month old cubs play before breakfast.
At birth, they weigh only three to five ounces, about one eight hundredth of the mother's weight. When the cub is first born, it is pink, blind, and toothless. Pandas live to about 20 years in the wild and 30 years in captivity. Breeding here is through artificial insemination, since pandas are quite fussy when it comes to choosing a mate. For a donation of $160 per person, you get to spend five minutes with these 18-month-old pandas. The pandas have been raised by humans and are quite comfortable with our intrusion, but they can be rough. So we enter during feeding time when they are distracted. This is fun. We also visited the Shendu Panda Breeding Center, where more than 55 pandas of all ages are being raised and cared for. In the wild, Mothers send their only cub into a tree for safety while they scavenge for food. Here, food is provided, but the habit still persists. Pandas sleep away half the day. They also spend almost as much time eating. Although they are bears and classified as carnivores, their diet consists almost entirely of bamboo shoots. The average giant panda eats as much as 20 to 30 pounds a day. And because they consume a diet low in nutrition, it is important for them to keep their digestive tracts full. In the wild, each bamboo species undergoes synchronous flowering, death, and regeneration. Hence, the giant panda must have at least two different species available in its range to avoid starvation. The panda's carpal bone, which has been enlarged to help the panda hold bamboo shoots while eating, has evolved as an opposing thumb. The giant panda is an endangered species, threatened by continued habitat loss and by a very low birth rate, both in the wild and in captivity. Pandas are solitary animals and only come together during the mating season, which is between March and May, and which lasts for only two or three days. Since pandas are solitary animals, and since they are fussy about their mating partners, Large, contiguous regions rich in bamboo are needed to sustain the population in the wild. Today, that is not possible. Using a new method that analyzes DNA from panda droppings, scientists believe that the wild panda population may be as large as 3,000. The red panda is not a bear, and is actually in the raccoon family. Since they also eat bamboo shoots, the confusion is understandable. These beautiful animals are Asiatic black bears more commonly known as moon bears because of the crescent-shaped white patch on their chests. The more than 60 bears here have been rescued from biofarms, where they have spent their life in heart-wrenching conditions, while bile is continuously drained from their gallbladders. 
The bile is used in traditional Chinese medicine, although the substance can now be artificially manufactured. Asiatic brown bears can also be found in the rescue center. We are on our way to Zhoujai Go, about two hours north of Chengdu by air and about 9,000 feet higher. This lush alpine forest, located adjacent to the east end of the Tibetan Plateau, was not officially discovered by the government until 1972. The area was made into a national park in 1982, opened to tourism in 1984, inscribed by UNESCO as a World Heritage Site in 1992 and became a World Biosphere Reserve in 1997. The scenery here is breathtaking. The park's best known feature is its dozens of blue, green and turquoise colored lakes. Originating in glacial activity, the water has a high concentration of calcium carbonate, making it so clear that the bottom is often visible even at high depths. In order to preserve the environment, no personal transport, not even bicycles, are permitted within the park. Dozens of miles of boardwalk were erected to keep foot traffic off the path, with trash bins, picnic areas and toilet facilities placed throughout the park. During two days of exploration, not one piece of litter was spotted. Prayer flags are hoisted for happiness, long life, prosperity and luck offering karmic merit to all sentient beings, not just to the people who hung them. After one dies, prayer flags are believed to guide the soul of the dead away from the netherworld. Prayer wheels also bring good fortune to all mankind. Turning a prayer wheel symbolically refers to the first teachings of the Buddha when he set the wheel of the law in motion. Inside each prayer wheel is a piece of paper containing a sacred text. The several Tibetan villages located in the park area were left in place, but given a makeover to better fit with the park aesthetics. They are somewhat touristy, but provided us with the opportunity to sample a typical home-cooked Tibetan lunch, complete with salted yak butter tea. Other than the tea, mm -hmm. the food was delicious. Mm. Don't worry about me. Before we leave Shandu for our Yangtze River cruise, a stroll down Jinli Street is in order. Restored in 2004, this ancient street of merchants has been in operations since the 3rd century BC. Today, both modern and traditional goods are offered for sale. train from Shendu to Chongqin takes just two hours, traveling at speeds up to 155 miles per hour. It is a clean, 
comfortable and convenient way to travel, especially using the electric cart that takes you directly to your car. Chongqing is China's largest city, with a population of 32 million people. It served as the capital during World War II, when Japan occupied the eastern part of China. It also has an old town section, with shops, restaurants, and a staircase leading down to the Yangtze River piers. Sesame seed candy is prepared the traditional way. We boarded our Yangtze River cruise boat in the evening offering us a nighttime view of Chongqing. We'll spend three days on the boat, stopping each day for land and small boat excursions before reaching the Three Gorges Dam. Fengdu is the ghost city. In ancient times, it was believed that spirits entered the city for review with sinful people remanded to spend time in the underworld before returning to life as a lowly animal. Sinless people returned as humans. Perched at the top of this temple complex is the Temple of the Underworld, home to the Kingdom of Hell. Chinese Buddhism is mixed with a healthy dose of gods, spirits, and superstition. During the Cultural Revolution of 1949, religion was banned as evil and temples were destroyed. In the last 10 years, however, China has seen a marked increase in religious practice. The river leading up to the Three Gorges Dam flows through many gorges, both large and small. Whitewater streams were filled in with a whopping 250 to 350 feet of water, depending on season, flooding existing towns and rural areas. On the plus side, electricity generation, downstream flood control, and increased Yangtze River shipping benefited from the $38 billion 15-year project. Half the money was spent on building new towns and relocating 1.4 million people. On the minus side, archaeologically significant sites were buried and the ecology of the region was changed. As originally envisioned, the dam was to provide 10% of China's electricity needs. Due to extremely rapid economic growth and unforeseen distribution problems, only 3% is being supplied today. There is a five-level double canal lock system alongside the dam, allowing river traffic to bypass the dam in about three hours. As shown in this model, a 30-minute ship elevator system is under construction. We entered the first lock at midnight. The back doors were closed and the water level was reduced by about 60 feet. The process was then repeated through all the locks. China is a vast country whose culture is made up of 5,000 years of civilization, mixed with a very Western and modern lifestyle. 
Our brief visit to central China barely scratched the surface of this complex region. To me, it has been a rich montage of images, from pandas to skyscrapers to terracotta warriors to gorges to temples to the Great Wall to mirror lakes to elegant waterfalls to warm, friendly people. And the food was delicious. We hope you enjoyed sharing this journey with us.